Now, last night, there was an election held across the pond with our British friends. Now, I'm not necessarily well-versed in British politics, so, and I'm sure some of my international voters might cringe a little bit, uh, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Now, uh, last night, essentially, the Tories, headed by Prime Minister Theresa May, got their ass handed to them. Now, the Tories had expected a landslide victory. Instead, well, they lost seats. What happened is that they held a snap election to try and win a bigger majority so that they could go in, they could do their policy, and, and so they could have a mandate, right? And it turns out they had lost a whole bunch of seats. Now, right now, after the voting is done, about or, or almost done anyway, uh, the Tories have about 318 seats. In order to get their majority, they need 326 seats. They did not get those. Now, again, May called for this election to get a majority. It did not work out that way. Because here comes Jeremy Corbyn in the Labor Party. Oh, well, holy crap. Now, look, to put it in terms that a lot of us, I think, uh, can understand, us, us being this former colonial, uh, co uh, colonials and all, Labor is a lot like the Democrats. They're, at this point, thanks to uh, uh, Blair, I believe, and you could correct me if I'm wrong on that, but they're essentially fairly corporate, very centrist now. So that's what, from what I understand. Uh, I don't know if I'm correct 100% on that. Uh, Clegg was also uh, just a complete failure, um, From again, from what I understand. Now, since the centrists started to take over, they have been losing seats left and right in a lot of elections, getting their asses handed to them by the other parties. So that is until, of course, Jeremy Corbyn. Now, Corbyn is the leader of the Labour Party, and he's actually a big left-winger. He's actually very left-wing. He's sort of like the Bernie Sanders of, of Britain, but even further to the left. So that's just to show you, okay, uh, how different the politics are over in Great Britain. Now, just like Bernie Sanders, however, the media and the political establishment hate Jeremy Corbyn. Now, for example, even people in his own party, there were labor leaders that tried to do a vote of no confidence in Jeremy Corbyn to get him removed after uh, some of the losses in 2015. That he, 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 fortunately, he survived those challenges and has worked to remake labor into a stronger party. Now, there are a lot of people in the establishment that said it cannot be done. In fact, you have a lot of critics here. Uh, Tom Peck, a political correspondent for The Independent, said that Corbyn will lead labor to electoral oblivion. Of that, there is no doubt. Even J.K. Rowling, uh, author of the Harry Potter series, says Corbyn will bring about the destruction of the Labor Party. You also have Nick Cohen saying Corbyn's labor won't just lose, it'll be slaughtered. Piers Morgan, we all know who Piers Morgan is. He said the conservatives will win a 90 to 100 seat majority. And again, speaking of Jeremy Corbyn's own party, the Labour Party, um, you had Sadiq Khan, mayor of London, saying Jeremy's personal ratings are the worst of any opposition leader on record, and the Labour Party is suffering badly as a result. You also had Owen Smith, who challenged Corbyn for leadership in 2016, saying that Labor will essentially be nothing more than a social movement that will not gain any power. Quote, we're a labor government in waiting, not a protest movement, During he said uh, to Corbyn during a debate. You also had people here in the United States writing about it. Zach Beauchamp, uh, who said, um, basically he made the argument that left-wing economic po policy or populism cannot stop right-wing populism. Well, we know that's wrong. He said, take Britain's Labour Party, which swung to the populist left by electing Jeremy Corbyn, a socialist who has proposed renationalizing Britain's rail system and its as its leader in 2015. The results have been disastrous. The Brexit vote in favor of leaving the EU, plummeting poll numbers for both Corbyn and his party, and a British political scene that is shifting notably on the right on issues of immigration and multiculturalism. Uh, Media Matters' Eric Bullert said, Corbyn's been a disaster for Labour uh, back this past January. So, and, and there's so much more. I mean, you even had David Axelrod 
pointing in and saying the Labour Party just sort of disintegrated in the face of their 2015 defeat and moved so far to the left that, you know, it's in a very frail state. And, of course, they said, you know, he's, uh, he's going to be... He's turning... Uh, the Labour Party into a nothing more than a fringe party that's never ever going to win. And then look what happened. Labour under Corbyn won 261 seats. Now look, you might be thinking, so? He didn't win. You had uh, the Tories winning 318 seats compared to 261. That's what we call a loss, sir. Well, not necessarily. I mean, what's important is that Corbyn captured about 40% of the vote. This has led to what they call a hung parliament, meaning the Tories essentially lost control of the government and now has to form a government with another party, a coalition. Now, I've got more on that, on, on who the Tories are actually going to uh, 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 try to form a coalition with. But what does this mean for Corbyn? Well, right now, he's not going to be prime minister at this point. Because Theresa May, despite getting embarrassed, is still holding on to the prime minister's spot. Now, that could change. Eh, Boris Johnson, believe it or not, Boris Johnson, he's out there saying, or well, not saying, but a lot of people are, are, are saying or are speculating that he might challenge Theresa May to take over for the uh, leadership of the Tories. We're not sure what's going to happen. Now, what's interesting is that now in labor, uh, Corbyn is now being taken more seriously. Now, labor originally, as I, as I reported, they thought they were going to lose seats. Turns out they had more seats than they've won in a long time. Now, Corbyn, again, he ran a left-wing populist campaign. Turns out you do better when you put a left-wing populist up against a right-winger. Turns out there's a chance of winning. Now, there's even talk of Corbyn, if there's another election, becoming the next prime minister, but that is speculation. Now, it won't surprise you when I point out the biggest factor in Corbyn's win, election turnout, especially of young people. It's estimated that somewhere around 69% of voters aged 18 to 24 turned out for this election. And that is the highest since 1997. So holy crap, a lot of young people, they turned out. I only wish, from my perspective in America, that we had that kind of a turnout. Especially when it comes to younger people, we might actually have President Sanders at this point. Now, May 1, again, she is a Prime Minister, but this is a disastrous loss for her. Nobody has any confidence in her anymore, in her leadership. She went into this expanding, uh, expecting a mandate. She called the snap election. And she essentially bungled it. She was the Hillary Clinton of this election. With the same kind of hubris coming in. And by the way, there are some links to Hillary Clinton. Uh, you had Jim Messina, who ran Priorities Action USA. Or was a, big, uh, a large figure in that super PAC that supported Hillary Clinton. Now trying to help, being hired by the Theresa May campaign. How'd that turn out for you? Not very well. It's the curse of the Hillary, uh, 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 the Hillary like surrogates or the Hillary staffers. They all have the same problem, hubris. And by the way, May was a conservative. What is Jim Messina, who worked for President Obama, by the way, doing running on a right-wing campaign? Not working for Corbyn or Labour, but on a right-wingers campaign. That's really weird. That's very, very interesting, actually. Now, back to May. Now, you had uh, Stephen Fielding yesterday, professor of political history at the University of Nottingham, saying that he was almost speechless at the projections. Because, look, all throughout the race, it was projected that the Tories were going to win a lot more seats. And then she was going to have that mandate and, we're, and Britain was going to go into a more right-wing direction. And then as the polls, as, as uh, the election got closer, the polls started to tighten. And then according to the exit polls last night, when they were uh, watching this, he said, quote, if this held, if this holds up, 
Ms. May, Mrs. May is gone. It's just a matter of time, even if they have a reduced majority. She asked for a mandate. She expected a strong endorsement. Now her judgment is completely under question. She was terrible in the campaign, he added. She is primarily the person who will be seen responsible for this. God, again, that sounds a lot like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> the parallels here are, I mean, just amazing to look at this. And again, she is the leader of the Tories. Her and her party are in a much, much weaker position because of what she had done. Because of her bad judgment. Now that's caused her to, of course, seek out uh, an, another party to form a coalition government. So who did she end up picking? The Democratic Unionist Party. Or the DUP. Now, let me, let me tell you what they stand for. Basically, they're anti-abortion, anti-gay, oh yeah, and they're climate change deniers. <laughs> so basically, the Tories are aligning themselves with the Republicans. At least that's the equivalent of the Republican Party. From what I know of the DUP and their stances, at least on those three issues, friendly with the, Demo with, with, with the Republican Party. Now, this coalition, if it happens, it's going to be rather interesting. Now, nobody knows what the DUP wants in return for joining this coalition, so we're going to have to see. Even so, big win for labor, even if it is technically a loss. But it's a loss for Theresa May, for sure. So what happens in the future? Uh, what I think is going to happen in the future? Um, labor and the left is going to be more emboldened thanks to this win. So maybe they'll start pushing more for, for more left policies. And if there's another election and Theresa May is still in her weakened state, it is possible we could see a uh, Prime Minister Jeremy Corbyn which would be crazy uh, to see, but also super amazing. So again, that's my uneducated American opinion on British politics. Uh, let me know uh, if and what I got wrong, or if it's easier, what I actually got right. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you wanna see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you wanna support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.